1906, George Henry Blod was employed by Lord Denby as footman, gardener and handyman. While Lady Denby's maid was a charming creature named Emily Turnbull. And on Sundays, George would entertain his lordship's guests on the flute. While Miss Emily played the virginal. Which didn't fool anyone. So it came as no surprise to the village when on September the 15th, 1907, they became man and wife. Their honeymoon was spent in Bognor Regis. <laughs> Emily christened her son Gavin after a sailor she once knew. Oh, listen to him talk. I and him only seven years old. <laughs> oh, there's musical he is. 1914, and George Blood was sent to fight in German East Africa. He never returned. Instead, he married a Ubangi lady and settled in the Congo. She was an intelligent girl, not just the pretty face. Heartbroken, Emily went to live at Frinton on Sea. <laughs> her many kind friends set up a fund to send little Gavin to Milan or Paris or anywhere. <laughs> After all, boys will be boys, Nescaf, uh, Nespa. <laughs> but you know, uh, as a child, Gavin was a delicate, uh, sensitive, a rather highly strung little bar boy. But at this time, he was helping me to write uh, my, uh, my, my, my music for la danse. You're very sweet. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, pardon, <laughs> But after that, you see, he began decomposing all by himself. <laughs> 1939, and war clouds were gathering. In England, young men gallantly answered the call to arms. Gavin Blood was no exception. Gavin joined the crack 5th Foot and Mouth Regiment. <laughs> At ports everywhere, soldiers embarked for the front. On the dockside, crowds were singing and cheering and laughing because they weren't going.
Gavin soon instilled his love of music into others. <laughs> Gavin was tireless in his efforts to entertain his fellow soldiers. sent to Colditz prison, where his music and his piano were his only escape. <laughs> Two days afterwards, Germany surrendered and Gavin settled down in Vienna. Schön. 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 <laughs> you know, during the war, everybody here in Vienna was poor. I was poor, my wife was poor, the butler was poor, the maid was poor. <laughs> but it was this poverty that brought all the people together. You would see advertisements in the newspaper saying, communist with a knife and fork wishes to meet capitalist with steak and kidney pudding. <laughs> Bravo! <laughs> I think that Gavin Blood came here for the music. After all, where else but in Vienna would you find music like this, played with such style, with such panache? Where else would you find musicians like, will you shut your bloody hole? <laughs> but you know, seriously, I think that the chorus <laughs> Gavin's downfall was Maria, the opera singer. <laughs> she, was that a woman? <laughs> That's what everybody kept asking, is that a woman? <laughs> in 1949, Gavin fell in love with opera singer Maria Carlo. It was her voice that first attracted him. to Count Mantovani, a renowned swordsman. <laughs> they were married on March the 15th, 1950. Later, disillusioned, Gavin returned to England. He, 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 he was a wonderful man. He was a wonderful man. Really. He could play anything. He was Neil Opperton in the Serenade. He would play Finkel's Cave or Overture of the Hebrides. He played that. I mean, the Four Indian Love Licks by Amy Woodford Bypass. <laughs> and then, I mean, you could be in a pub with him all night long and you'd never even know he had a penny. <laughs> he's a wonderful man. You, you, you used to say, on the week to my two favourite composers. Mozart and Liszt. You no, know, he only drank shandy. <laughs> <laughs> and then he wrote this, uh, what they call it, ele ele electronic music for the, uh, um, for the uh, documentary about the new computerised postal service. What happened? He got lost in the post. With the advent of pop, there was less and less demand for Gavin's kind of music. <laughs> At the age of 
1862, overcome with remorse and chronic flatulence, he took to his bed where he remained for three years. Vicar <laughs> gone yet? No, and it wasn't the vicar, it was the doctor. I thought he was a bit familiar for a vicar. <laughs> your bread poultice again, haven't you? Well, I will not be, will I? Well, it's time for his bed bath, anyway. I'm not having a bed bath, get up. I'm not having a tuck me. Get on a bar to bit, then. <laughs> Don't worry, old fellow. We'll have you on your feet in no time. <laughs> I'm going to have a job getting the coffin down these steps. <laughs> get off with you. I don't want to oh, tuck me, you go Why let the nurse do it? So, oh, So, on May the 12th, 1974, Gavin Blanc died of chronic ecstasy. And so he never heard the brass band from the village where he was born, just outside Wedlock, play his tone poem, Bird of Freedom, which perhaps was just as well. <laughs>